that's awesome. Like that just let me do my, the same for comparison purposes. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny that shows how free diving as a competitive sport will really modify your body and the question is does it also modify your brain and the answer is of course yes but the question then is how exactly now on a side note I want to point out that my excess body mass in that video is not just fat to make that point in the little clip on your side, you see me play with a 90 kilo sandbag at the Philippine Strongest Man qualifier um, two years ago. Now, today's topic is the neuroscience of the breath hold. So how does it work in your brain if you're holding a breath? Now, holding a breath is in a curious spot in terms that it's in between a voluntary movement like you know moving your fingers and an automated movement like a heartbeat so there's of course no way to voluntarily stop a heartbeat that would kill us and it's very rare maybe during a, an extreme fright that we move our fingers without making a voluntary decision to move our fingers so how is this implemented in the brain and what changes when you learn to extend your breath hold? Now, there's a brain region in the brainstem, which is called the Pre-Bötzinger complex. Interestingly, it's, it's named after German wine, Bötzinger, which was served at the conference where that region was named. So, you know, neuroscientists have a sense of humor, kind of, sometimes. The, uh, this region is what's called a central pattern generator. It intrinsic, intrinsically generates a rhythm. It fires action potential. It fires command signals to the, the breathing musculature on its own regularly. This is because of the particular arrangement and alignment of ionic currents in the neurons, in the brain cells of this pre bertzinger complex. Connected to that pre bertzinger complex it's a, it's another region in the brainstem, in the medulla oblongata, which is called the retinotrapezoid complex. This region is where the CO2, the carbon dioxide sensitivity, uh, resides. So as every freediver knows, every scuba diver should know, it's not a lack of oxygen, but it's a buildup of CO2, which gives us the urge to breathe. Now, these two regions in the brainstem, I would, I would say, are uh, where the automated part of breathing, you know, where the, the involuntary part of breathing is located in. You know, when we sleep, when we're not paying attention to it, we're still breathing. And it's because of the retinotrapezoid nucleus and the uh, pre bertzinger region. Now, where is the voluntary part of breathing. I mean, I, I can both hold my breath as well as I can decide to, you know, take a deep breath out. Where is that located? And it, it turns out in the, in the cerebellum as well in the motor cortex. The cortex is this large gyrated uh, region of our, our brains. Now, the motor cortex is also where voluntary uh, movements, you know, like again, like moving our fingers, uh, commanded from and uh, this is where the commands to the, the voluntary commands for breathing are coming from it seems that there in mammals there is a bit of a conflict between eating swallowing and breathing because the the first part of the tube is shared between you know uh, where food goes and where the air goes so Sometimes, in order to swallow without an accident, we essentially have to stop breathing for a short, very short period of time. This also explains why you know, it's this trick in free diving works that if you have a strong urge to breathe, you can just swallow and it will for a short time suppress that urge. So this is where the, the voluntary part of breathing control comes in. 
Now, there is another issue here, which is that sometimes uh, uh, experienced freedivers have these contractions of their throat when they're coming up at the end of a dive. It seems to me, I'm speculating here, but I think it's reasonable speculation that what we're seeing there is a, a push and pull between the voluntary control of breathing, which is to, you know, to hold your breath while you're still on a free dive, and the involuntary part, you know, which is like there's a lot of CO2 buildup, I have to breathe. And this causes not a full breath, but it causes these contractions. Quite interesting. So, I have to look at my notes. What is going on when we are learning to extend our breath hold? Again, I'm speculating here, but I think it's educated speculation based on you know, my knowledge of neuroscience. What is going on is that there is a lot of neural plasticity in almost every part of the brain. Specifically meaning that these connections between nerve cells, you know, the strength of the synapses which connect nerve cells, they change. This breathing uh, activity here is an absolutely necessary activity for sustaining life functions. Obviously, you know, if you br not breathe more than a few minutes, you're, you're likely to suffer serious damage or die. So, I'm, I'm speculating that because of that, there's not a lot of neuronal plasticity. It's, it's not very easy to, to strengthen, essentially, the connection of these voluntary brain regions onto the automated uh, centers of breathing control. So, hence, you know, just to extend the breath hold for a few minutes, it often takes, you know, months or years of, uh, you know, heavy training. So I think because of the neurobiology of this, there is probably no shortcut, you know, there's, there's no other option than you know, intense training. I hope you found this interesting. I've, I've written a book actually about uh, this topic and related topics. It's called Gehirn Extreme, which means, uh, you know, Extreme Brains, it's, as you can probably tell uh, from the title, the book is in German. Uh, it's available by, by Hübner. And um, I've put a link in the, com in the description section of this video. I hope you found this interesting. If you did so, please, you know, like, subscribe and uh, comment. I'm happy to answer any questions about the breath hold from the point of view of a, of a neuroscientist which is my original training. Um, yeah, and please check back next week.